guys welcome to this class and in this class we are going to be solving problems right problems that are associated with this electric field remember in the other class let's begin to drop the formulas that we have applied the first formula we said is that e right we said that e we said e electric field is equal to what is equal to the force per unit charge and the unit is measured in newton meter sorry in newton per coulomb right yes and also we said that electric field also is given by k q all over r square and we also said that electric field is given by voltage or potential difference all over the distance of separation right and we said that electric field is a vector it's a vector quantity is that true yes so what we are going to be doing right now is that we are going to be solving some problem but before then let's observe the principle of superposition what is the principle of superposition principle the principle of superposition sorry the principle of superposition the principle of superposition here the principle of superposition states that when we have i will just explain it in concept for example let's say we have q1 creating an electric field right it's creating an electric field on q2 so let's say we have Q creating an electric field on Q1, also creating an electric field on Q2, also creating an electric field on Q3, also creating an electric field of Q4. In this case now, we call this a charge distribution. A charge what? A charge distribution, right? What will happen is that the total electric field is the vector sum of the electric field on Q1, right, plus the electric field on Q2. Are you getting it now? Are you getting it now? Yes. Plus the electric field on Q3 plus the electric field of Q4. So the total electric field should be the vector sum. Are you getting it now? So you calculate this one, skip it, calculate this one, keep it. Then you sum it vectorially. You sum it what? Vector. You sum it waiting. It must be vectorial. Knowing this fully well, we can now dive into our problems. So we have to solve here. Example. We have to solve example 2.1. Example. 2.1 and what is example 2.1 it says that in, an in, in a rectangular coordinate system are you getting it now two charge two charges of 10 raised to power minus 8 each are fixed at the point listen very carefully this is the origin of the question it says two charges are fixed at the point x1 comma y1 right and that is equal to 0 0.1 comma 0 right and x2 comma y2 is also fixed at the point minus 0 0.1 comma 0 right where all distance are in meters, I'm reading the question right now. Where all distance are in meters, find the magnitude and direction of the electric field intensity at the following points. A, at the following point. Listen very carefully. Oh God, my God. A, find it at A, right? At the origin. So we should find the magnitude and direction of the electric field intensity A at the origin. B, 
at 0 0.2 comma 0 at this origin c at 0 0.1 comma 0 0.15 and d right we have to solve everything right now 0 point sorry 0 comma 0 0.1 in solving this, it is very important to understand our coordinate system that we have learned in secondary school, right? So first of all, let's start from A. A says at the origin. So you know that we like saying solution so that we differentiate the problem for the solution. So A says origin. What do we mean by the origin are we getting it now origin means zero zero are we there yeah so first these are the coordinates that have been given to us in the question so we sketch always know that your x is the first value you see and your y is the first value so x for this guy here for this guy here for this charge let's call this one q1 right and let's call this one q2 for q1 q1 is defined as zero so let's take an origin let's call this zero right this is zero so our y here is zero but our x is 0 0.1 so you already know that y is to this as is you already know that we have y and we have x right so there is nothing on the y axis because our y is zero look at it y x y so our y is zero so nothing should be here i don't mean it's like minus one here so it will be on this side plus but there's nothing here but what we have here is 0 0.1 how do you know that this 0 0.1 should be on the right side right how do you know that it should be on this right side or it should be on this left side since there is no minus, it means that it is positive. So a positive is on this axis. This is the positive axis. We already know this, right? So something like this. Q1, 0 0.1. Are we together now? Are we together? Yes. Now, what of Q2? Q2, we also start from the origin, right? And there's nothing on the x-axis. There's nothing on the this zero. We start from the origin, and it minus zero point one. So it is on the left side, right? So that from minus zero point one. Are we there now? Are we together now? Yes. Yeah. So what we have been asked is that we are to calculate. The total sum of the electric field intensity. Are we there? All right. So, what we have for right now is that first, is that first, we already know that electric field intensity. First, we calculate the electric field intensity here, right? And we now sum it with the electric field intensity here. Note that this side is negative. Why is it negative? It's going to the we must take note of the vector because it's a vector quantity. So it's going to the negative axis, and this side is positive, so it's going to the positive axis. So let's calculate electric field intensity for Q1, that is A1. We are trying to use superposition right now. Since there is charge here, right, we will use the formula KQ1 all over arrow square. There is no force given, so we are not to use this one. Now, what is our k? We already know that our k is giving us 9, right, times 10 raised to power 9. And our q1 is 10 raised to power from the question minus 8. All over our arrow. What is our arrow? The distance, right? The distance from the origin. Because we are looking for it from this origin. And that distance is 0. 0.1 square. Are we together now? So if you press your calculator, if you input in your calculator, 
that is 9 times 10 raised to power 9 times 10 raised to power minus 8 8 right 0 0.1 square you are going to have a value of an answer equal to 900 so your answer will be 900 newton coulomb okay note that this electric field intensity is acting here right it's acting to this positive side plus so it is positive we don't need to put plus now let's calculate for e2 e2 is equal to k q2 over r square right so that's same thing as 9 times 10 raised to power 9 times 10 raised to power minus 8 all over the same thing 0 0.1 square so in this case now we also have the same answer as 900 newton coulomb per meter but note it is going it is from this origin now it is at where the negative x axis and we said that electric field is a vector so we must we need to include this minus are we together now yes so what do we do we have a1 right we have a1 and we have a2 and following the principle of superposition using the principle of superposition the principle of superposition right state that we add right yes so from this principle of superposition, I think I can clean this now. The principle of superposition says that the total electric field is the vector sum. Take note of the vector sum. It's not the sum, the vector. So that's why we are adding our minus. So E will now be E1 plus E2. What is our E1? 900. And what is our E2? Minus 900. So the total electric field here will be equal to zero. And that's the answer. Are you getting it now? Yes. So that's for A. <laughs> Let's go for B. Let's go for B. Let's go for B. For B now says that B, for B now says that at a point, right, zero B, zero point two comma zero zero point two comma zero so in this case we sketch again zero point two comma zero we know our origin right our origin is like this so we want to find the electric field at a point zero comma two so let's call this zero point two because x is always the first and y is this so from to the x axis is zero point two right now this is the point where we'll find our electric field intensity this is where our e we want to find our e but before then there's something that we need to know what is what are we looking for what is contributing the field q1 and q2 and we said that q1 we said that q1 right this is q1 is at a point zero never forget this because these are the what we are working 0 0.1 right from the origin right and q2 q2 is to this side 0 0.1 Remember, we are dealing with vectors, right? Yes, yeah, so this is where Q2 is located. Sorry. So this is where Q2 is located, and this is where Q1 is located. But this is where we are looking for the electric field intensity, this point. So what do we do? This is Q1, and this is Q2. We look for, listen very carefully, <laughs> oh God. We look for the electric field, right, of Q1 to this point and Q2 to this point, then we sum it together. So our E1 here now should be KQ1 
over r square. So what's our k? 9 times 10 raised to power 9. What's our q1? 10 raised to power minus 8. Then what is our arrow? Your arrow is your distance, the distance from the point of charge to the point of the electric field. Now this is 0 0.1 and the overall distance from here to E is 0 0.2. So what do we do? We subtract 0 0.1 from this, right? Because everything here is 0 0.2 and from here to here is 0 0.1. So automatically that means the distance from this place to this side is also 0 0.1. So that the sum of everything will give you 0 0.2. Do you understand the logic? So that means that from Q1 to E is 0 0.2. One. So we say 0 0.1 square. And when you do this, you have to have an answer like 9, right? 9,000 Newton. Is it 900 or 9,000? Yes, 9,000 Newton per coulomb. So we are done calculating for E1. So next we calculate for is E2, right? And sorry, yes, E2. And E2 is the electric field intensity of Q2 to E, right? So to do that, what we use the formula E2 KQ1, KQ2, right? Over R square. So our K is always 9 times 10 raised to power 9. And our Q is 10 raised to power minus 8. It's at the beginning of the equation. And our distance is what? 0 0.1. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. Now, in this case now, our distance is not 0 0.1. Let's examine our distance. From Q2 to E, first of all, now note, it is a vector. We are moving from this point now to this side. So this side means positive. Are we getting it now? Are you getting it? So, that means it should be positive because the direction is going to this side. We are moving towards this side. So, this is 0 0.1, right? Then, this is 0 0.2. So, we add everything together. So, the distance from Q2 to E is 0 0.3. So, that's 0 0.3 or square. So, what should we have here? You should have an answer like 1,000 Newton. 1,000 Newton. So somebody will ask, why are we not putting minus? The reason is because, right? The reason is because we are acting to... The reason is because we are acting to the positive side. Are you getting it now? Yes, so we are acting to the positive side and we are not to put minus. So, all right. So, what we do is that our overall electric field intensity E should be equal, should be equal to what? E1 and E2. So that's 9,000 plus 1,000. And that's equal to 10,000 Newton per coulomb. So this is the answer. The answer is 10,000 Newton per coulomb. All right. Let's go to the next question. I think the video is becoming long, but we must finish this question. I thought we, we could ever finish the question and go to, but we must explain. And... So the next question here says, now we, we now have two coordinates, right? Next question here says, at a point, that is question C. So question C, question C. We already know this is X, right? And we already know that this is Y. Are we there? Now our coordinates from the, we already know that Q2 from 
is what at a point 0 0.1 from the origin and q q1 is as a point also 0 0.1 now we have a question here that y is what y is 0 0.5 so the let's get we want to calculate the electric field at this point now so from that point y is 0 0.5 right y x is 0 0.1 so this is x already this is x this is the x axis and this x axis is 0 0.1 and this 0 0.1 is already here so there's no need to extend the line so q2 is at 0 0.1 so it means that there's no need to extend more line we can't extend more line because the value for x is 0 0.1 that is from the origin to this side is 0 0.1 right we have done that now then for the y axis is 1.5 so from this place we draw our 1.5 so this is 0 0.15 so this point is where we will calculate our electric feed intensity are we clear now all right so from e1 First of all, how do we calculate our electric field intensity? We calculate E1, right? Then we calculate E2, and we vector sum them together. So what's our E1? Our E1 is given by K Q1 over R square, right? So what is our K? 9 times 10 raised to power 8. What's our Q1? 10 raised to power minus 8, right? What's our arrow? Your arrow is the distance of Q1 to the point of electric field. So that is, we are we are talking of Q1 now. Distance of Q1 to the point of electric field is 0 0.15. So that's 0 0.15, right? So when you press your calculator and input that, you will have a value like, I think, Try it. That's 9 times 10 raised to power. Don't just watch. Make sure you are writing, you are solving, you are pressing your calculator. That's how you learn. That's the truth. That's how you learn. 0 0.15. Sorry, there's a square here. So that square should be it's a square here. So that will give you 400, right? Yes, that will give you. 400 Newton Coulomb. Are we together now? Yes. All right, so we have gotten our E1. So what do we do? We calculate for E2. But note that this 400 is at the Y, y axis. <laughs> it's at the Y axis. Make sure you note this down. Because electric field is a vector. So 400 would be y, right? All right. Okay. So that means that this is also same thing as E y. But let's leave that for now. We'll go back to it later. So note it 400 Newton to the y. Let's calculate for E2. We'll calculate for E2 now is distance between right so that is e2 is equal to k q1 right k q1 all over sorry k q2 all over arrow square so our k we already know is what what's our k our k is 9 times 10 raised to power 8 times our q1 is 10 raised to power minus 8 then our arrow square what is our arrow our arrow is the distance of e to q2 are we there yes now the distance of e to q2 distance of e to q2 we cannot use this distance we can't say this but no we are talking about vector so the shortest distance is from this side right to q2 so do that we now to get this distance now let's call this arrow we use pythagoras theory and pythagoras theory will be the root right 
of the square sum of this side and this side. Now, the total distance here is 0 0.2. Are we there now? Square plus the total distance here is 0 0.15. Are we there? Square. So if you input that in your calculator, what will you have? 0 0.2 square plus 0 0.15. That is 0, sorry, 0 0.15 square. Yes, yeah, 0 0.15 square. So you have 0 0.25 as your answer. So that's 0 0.25 meters. I don't know if it is meter, but it's all fine. So what will be here is 0 0.25 square. So when you input that also in your calculator, 0 0.25 square. Okay, so now we have gotten our E2. To be sorry, this is nine, not ten to the power eight. So, so to be this, but we cannot work with this part, right? We already know that. So we have to break it down. So we have to break it down into two components. So that is e two y and e two x. So how do you calculate e two y? Remember that e 2y from basic vector is equal to e2 sine theta, right? Yes. So, how do we get our theta? We have a value here, 1.5, and we have... So, this is opposite because the side facing the angle is opposite, and the side that is remaining, because this is hypotenuse, the longer side, the side, the side is adjacent. So, we look for the relationship between opposite and adjacent. So that is use soccer tour, right? And opposite, this is O. I just said that is tan theta. So that means that tan theta is equal to opposite that is 0 0.15 over I just said that is 0 0.1, right? So theta will now be equal to the tan inverse of. 0.15 all over 0 0.1 and if you do this we have an answer like 53 if you do this we have an answer like 53 point sorry 56.3 degree 56.3 degree. So our EY now, E2Y, is equal to E2, that is 144 that we just calculated, then sine 56.3 degree. So that should be, that is 144, right? Sine 56.3. So you have an answer like 1198, 1198 Newton CM. Are we together now? We are together, right? Okay, so let's calculate EX. Let's calculate EX. Let's calculate EX. This is just vectors. We did this before, right? And we say EX is calculating, we're resolving something to the X component. EX is same thing as E2, right? Sorry, not sign now. It's cos. It's what? Cos. So E2 cos theta. That's the same as 11440 cos 56.3. If you press your calculator, that should give you 798.98. This is what for the EX. 798.98 Newton per column. So we have done. So what we now do is that we'll get the total electric feed. We we now sum everything together vectorially. Hope you are writing them down. 
yes we now sum everything together vectorially so here so here i think i cannot clean everything here now because i'm done calculating my e1 my e2 so i don't think there's need for this diagram right now it's not really for this diagram all right so um, let's see if we can calculate our total electric <laughs> sorry for that so let's see if we can calculate our total electric feed so our total electric feed is e is what in this case now is e1 right plus e2 so it's our e1 and our e2 so what's our e1 our e1 is 4000 4000 right yes 4000 newton per column to the y axis okay I, I i remember we wrote 400 before but it was a mistake it was a, it's supposed to be 4000 you can recheck it i know most of you see so that is 10 9 we okay let's do it so that you don't think that's 9 times 10 raised to power 9 right times 10 raised to power minus 8 right that is now we say that the distance between e1 and that point is 0 0.15 or square is for e1 so if you press your calculator you have to you have 4000 to dy the then e2 is equal to right 1 1 nine eight as we just calculated this is acting to where the y component one one nine eight to the y plus seven nine eight point nine eight to the x component so what we do on that vector is that we add y and y together and x and x together so the y and y should be four thousand right plus one one nine eight that will give you ey your total ey because we are adding them vectorially so this will give you five one nine eight newton per coulomb and our ex is just only x yes yeah, so our ex should be equal to nine eight seven nine eight point nine eight newton coulomb so what we now do now is that recall that under vectors right under vectors like i just highlighted here like i just highlighted here before I just did it that the total resultant vector v arrow let's call it e arrow is equal to the square of the component like the root we have done this before root of the square of the y component and our y component we have here is five right right one eight square plus the square of the x component that is seven nine eight point nine eight square So if you press your calculator, if you press your calculator, you have five one nine eight square plus seven nine eight point nine eight square, and you root it, you should have five. Are you getting it now? Point two right or you can say we have we have five two five nine newton that's the answer but in the book it was approximated as five right point two times ten raised to power theory newton but what if we just want one significant figure 
right what if we need one significant figure so that means since this is not equal to five we can approximate it to be zero right so that'll be 5.0 times 10 raised to power theory newton colon per meter all right thank you very much i think the d you can do it by yourself because it's straightforward right it's straightforward it's something you can do okay let me just give you a clue on how to do the d after doing it so the d here for the d let's see let's i'll just give you the clue the same thing right it's just zero zero point one so this is your x this is your y and you already know your coordinates right that q2 is 0 0.1 right and this is 0 0.1 q1 so what is it trying to say x is equal to 0, then y is 0 0.1. So it means from this point, right? From this point. So in this case now, this is where the electric field intensity is E. So from Q1 to this point should be noted, and from Q2 to this point also should be noted, right? Yes. So calculate your Q1, calculate your Q2. Well, first, already know that this is 0 0.1, right? So if you, the distance between E1 to Q2 can be gotten using the Pythagoras theory, that is 0 0.1 square plus 0 0.1 square. So that will give you 0 point, that is 0 0.14. So the answer here, arrow, 0 0.14. And same thing here, 0 0.14. So what you do is that you calculate your E1, right? That is K Q1 over R square. Calculate your E1. After calculating your E1, you will now resolve it into two angles, X and Y. This is your angle. I know your angle will be the same. And keep it. Do for the same thing here. Resolve it into angle X and Y. And keep it there. Do the vector sum of everything together, and that will be your answer. All right, so let's go to the next question. Yeah.